Hello, my name is Wendy Wagner. I wonder if I'm recording. Hello, I am Wendy Wagner, and I would like to make a series of videos on the ego. Because I feel an entirely new psychology needs to be formulated, created, and distributed with the ego consciousness as its center. Now, to do this requires an enormous shift in our minds. And I also believe that the new psychology should entirely be around this issue, is this 180 degree shift. The fact is, the great majority of us on this planet have been raised with thought forms that are 100% incorrect, 100%. And we're all functioning from a foundation that is wrong, incorrect, doesn't work. And I'm, I'm pretty sure the world is reflecting this to us in a very big way right now. For instance, let me give you some examples of the 180 degree shift. The truth is, we create our entire reality with thought. I am creating my reality. I am responsible for my reality. Okay, idea number two. Perception is an effect, not a cause. So in this shift, everything you see out there is actually an effect of your thoughts. Okay. Number three, everything that comes to you is for your benefit. Because everything, every experience we have is coming to help wake us up to the truth of who we really are. We, most of us, were raised with the ideas that we were weak, limited, fallible, um, sickly, all of these sort of negative terms we were very much raised with. And we were raised with an enormous amount of guilt. All of these things are completely incorrect and very, very detrimental to our mental health. And the single biggest inhibitor of our ability to create limitlessly, because that is our true inheritance, that we are creators exactly equal to Mohammed, Christ, uh, Moses, you name it, any of the big guys in history, we actually are equals to we have exactly the same potential as these these men and women throughout history now the ego is what stops all that and that is why i feel really strongly that the study of the ego is the single most important thing for anyone to do at this point Now, I'm not going to be talking about the ego as Freud or Jung or traditional psychology thinks about it. This I want to make very clear. All right, as things stand in our culture today, the ego is sort of like a medium personality between the high self and the low self. And that, that ego, you know, navigates the world, gets to our job on time, uh, pays our bills, etc. deals with the material plane. In this paradigm, the ego is everything that wants to stop you from being the expansive, liberated, free, powerful being that we really are. The ego is the idea of limitation, limitation and separation. All right, so we have two basic, two basic realms, if you will. We have unity consciousness and separation consciousness. The ego is 100% born of separation consciousness. Um, I am not powerful like Christ. This is what the ego says. Um, I am weak. I am not really in touch with nature. I am not really connected to anybody else. I hate parts of myself. You know, all this separation is going on. And ego loves to keep us there. 
for whatever reason, it's kind of mysterious. The whole thing is like how this all got started and I will get into it later. Um, different ideas about how, how the ego originated. But let's just for this moment, talk about it as a thought system that's incorrect and be open to the idea that we have been programmed since childhood with extremely detrimental belief systems. Now, who we believe ourselves to be influences our entire reality. And that's why we need to study the ego, so that we can know where we're vulnerable, know all the different strategies the ego is so good at getting us to believe. You know, why is the ego so powerful to get us to imagine that we're really weak and, and, and powerless when in fact we're quite the opposite? How does it do that? And that's what I want to look into in great detail with this series. Um, the most difficult part about this is the ego has influence over your perceptions, your thoughts, your feelings, and your senses. So how do you get free of it? Aha, <laughs> that's what we're gonna be talking about because too few people are talking about this and it is the biggest challenge to our world right now and to each of us as individuals. How do I learn to overcome the, the negativity of the ego, which tells me I'm you know, worthless, to realizing and loving my entire self? So the word atonement becomes really important here. And, and here, here you're seeing this flip again, this quintessential flip from, you know, um, from two totally different identities, radically different. Now, I want to take one word as a really good example of this 180 80 degree shift and all the ingredients that are part of it and it starts it doesn't start but this word this one word probably the most powerful word in the English language is an excellent start and it's the word sin right and it doesn't matter whether you're a Catholic or you it doesn't matter what religion you were brought up in if you were brought up in any religion the fact remains that each of our minds has been deeply influenced by this idea so sin represents the idea that you could do something irrevocably bad, so bad that only punishment is going to help. All right, so the idea of, make, you know, of sinning and punishment are extremely tied in our minds. And you'll notice this is the whole way we raise children, is guilt trip them, then punish them. Um, and again, fundament, fundamentally incorrect notions completely. But once upon a time, and here you can see the entire 180 degree flip, sin was an archery term that meant missing the mark. So you have a goal, you really want to get to a certain uh, state of mind, you wanna be happier, whatever your goal is. The only way, if you're an archer, to learn how to hit that bullseye is to miss it zillions of times zillions of times. There is no other way. And that is true for us as well. When we take away the ego, which tells us, which judges what we do and tells us we are so bad for having done that, we take that completely out of the equation and say, whoo, whoo, that was a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. And I'm going to change it. Really, the biggest mistake we could possibly make is not sitting down and really asking ourselves where we made our mistake and how do we rectify it? That, I mean, if, if I was an archer and I didn't you know, go, oh, okay, I pulled too much to the right just then, and I need to pull more to the left, you know, where would I get? Nowhere, I'd get absolutely nowhere. But our lives are so filled with stuff we have to do and accomplishments and busyness and all of that, that very rarely do we sit down and really take stock of ourselves. We've been told it's selfish to look at ourselves like that, right? And so this is the very beginning. This is the, just the, the tip of the iceberg about the ego. And um, we'll, we'll 
in the following uh, series, we're going to go into what the different aspects of the ego are, and they're not at all as clear and simple as, you, as we think they are. There's some very deceptive ones in there that have huge effects. Um, we're going to look at that so that we can find out where we're most vulnerable, and we're going to look at remedies. How, how do you deal with the ego? How do you, given that it's taken over your senses, your perceptions, etc.? And um, that is the really, really important piece is how to begin to deal with it. Obviously, awareness is the first and most important step, beginning to watch our thoughts constantly, 24-7. If we're not watching our thoughts, tremendous amounts go subconscious. My teacher used to say, there are no neutral thoughts. Think about this really carefully. Every thought you have is either creating a more painful reality for you, one filled with more guilt, one filled with more suffering, or it's creating a reality of love, peace, ease, happiness, no guilt. All right? Guilt is of the ego, and we're going to go into guilt quite a bit because it's highly destructive. Our entire world has gone completely nuts because everybody is filled with guilt. So the next session will be about a particular aspect of the ego, which is lack. And it is the foundation, the fundamental misperception, if you will, that we took on and we believed was true. And it's absolutely not in my vast experience with all of this, which is about 40 years, by the way. And I have tested all of this stuff very, very deeply. My teacher um, said, look, don't believe a word I say. Go out there and experience it for yourself. Experience is the best teacher. And I really believe that now. This is not book learning, entirely book learning for me. This is experience. And um, so I want to invite you to do the same. Don't believe a word I say. Um, and tune in for the next episode because this is so, so important. Thank you for listening.